Hey, boo, hey. All right. And we are live. Yes, we are. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to give you guys some time to get in. To get in. Come on in the room. That's what I'm going to get y'all time. Hey, y'all, hey. Hello, hello. Welcome into our Friday Live. Y'all, we have had a live every day this week. <laughs> we have had a live every day this week. I know it is like, uh, majority for the majority of you, it's finals week. So whether or not you're taking the NCLEX. Hey, boo, hey, hey, April. Hey from um, um, Arizona, half from Georgia. <laughs> um, but whether or not you're taking the NCLEX, piano or RN, your cardio exam, I don't know, your semester final exams, or even the ATI. Um, healthy hair goes out. I was waiting. Girl, I'm here. Um, I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys enough content and enough um, valuable information so that no matter what phase you are in nursing school, you could benefit. All right. That's why we, um, I wanted to do this final stretch campaign. Um, Pebble Beauty said, I had clinicals today. Ooh. Um, hello from Green Bay. Awesome, awesome. All right, so every day this week, we have gone over some type of topic. And today's topic today, tonight's topic, I don't know what time it is for you guys, but over here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So I guess it's nighttime. It's evening time, whatever. But um, for today slash night, we are going to be going over how to create a steady plan, okay? So I hope you guys have your um, your notes in hand because we're going to be jotting some things down um one second all right we're just going to be going over um just generally how to create a study plan no matter what you're studying okay there's certain there's certain things that um go into creating a study plan and like it doesn't really matter what's the content slash topic you can just kind of plug and play it and i'm going to be here and teach you guys um what that is today all right, so first of all, hello. My name is um, Sam, Nurse Sam. I am a licensed practical nurse in LPN here in the state of Georgia, and I have been so since 2014. <laughs> I don't know why I forget every time. But yes, I have been so, I've been an L a licensed LPN, a licensed nurse um, since 2014. I am currently not bedside. I have done bedside. I was bedside for, I believe, five or six of those years. And then in 2020, I chose to um, leave the bedside and dedicate 100% of my time, money, and efforts into making sure you guys um, get into nursing school, get through nursing school, graduate, and then pass the NCLEX. Okay, so I've been doing that, and that's what I've been doing in Nurse Sam Global Media, the name of my company. Um, if you guys don't know too much about me, um, on here on Instagram, I'm at the Nurse Sam, and I'm primarily known for like my creative study guides. Okay, um, if you don't know anything else about me, you know that I do not do boring anything, but especially boring studying. It won't stick. It just won't. I've I've been through nursing school. Um, I've, I've done, I've been through majority of the poor, of the programs and it just didn't work for me in my, um, learning style. You can say that I am a visual learner and a kinesthetic learner to the T. <laughs> and, um, I also found out that I have just a touch of like ADHD. So whatever I'm studying, whatever I am, um, digesting has to really interest me and grab my attention otherwise i'm not gonna pay attention <laughs> at all and it's not gonna stick and to get through nursing school everything has to stick everything won't stick but a majority of the stuff has to stick um so so with that being said i came up with a little framework that i'm gonna um, share with you guys on how to create a study plan for whatever you're doing now, when I took my NCLEX, I took it, I graduated in August, and then I took mine, um, I think, like, mid to end September. So, I had about um, six to eight weeks, no. Yeah, I had about six weeks, I should say, to study for my NCLEX. And I was one of the ones that I just wanted to get it out the way. I was already, I felt confident 
graduating nursing school. I felt confident graduating nursing school and then, you know, going right into my review. I mean, I, I slept for a couple of days. <laughs> I caught up in that sleep for a couple of days. But then after graduation, after I slept for a couple of days, then I got into my um, my study plan. It didn't automatically like take fire right off um, right off the bat. I had to, you know, go through some trials, tribulations, see what worked, what didn't work for me and my study style. And then finally, I came across, you know, what worked for me uh, being a visual learner and a kinesthetic learner. And that's majority well having that um having that experience shapes or shaped majority of why um I have the study kits that I have and why I do my study kits in the way that I do my study kits okay very colorful um never just kind of like straight to the point if if I just wanted to give you a study kit that was straight to the point then you can get somebody else, get somebody else's study kit make your own all the stuff like that but I have a gift a, a truly I truly have a gift for um, linking something that's already in your memory whether that's something nostalgic or just you know just basic everyday things and comparing it and linking it to whatever it is that you're studying so that that can definitely boost your um, ability to retain and recall it at a later time okay um, half the battle of studying is that yes you have to retain slash remember whatever it is that you're um, studying. But the real test comes from you being able to recall all that stuff, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and get into the tips and tricks of how you can create a study plan for you, all right? So first things first, you gotta know your learning style. You gotta know your learning style. So hopefully by now, I don't know what stage you are in, um, you all are in in your nursing school journey, your nursing journey. Um, actually, let me know in the comments. What are you studying for? Are you studying for your NCLEX, PN, your NCLEX, RN, um, ATITs, HESI, your EXIT, um, ATI? What are you studying for? Um, let me know in the comments below. What are you currently studying and preparing for? Let me know right here. Lovely Max said the N clicks the N. Um, says, Ashley said, I feel like nothing works for me learning style wise. You may you may have a combination. You may need a combination of different resources and different types of styles to really work, you know, to get what's best for you. Nobody is like one size fits all. No learning styles one size fits all. Like I said, I'm a combination of two of the learning styles. Um, but, you know, there's certain... There's certain chapters and there's certain like categories where I'm stronger in and I don't really need as much as a visual like guide, but there's other, um, and we're, we're going to go over it. There's other categories and topics where I'm just like, I need everything. <laughs> Let me see what y'all say. It has the entrance, blah, 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 beginning with semester exams, first semester finals, med search, um, finals, blah, 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 ATITs. Awesome job. Okay, great. Currently doing prereqs. The ATI test study guide them did not help. My first semester exam. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into how to create a study guide. So, like I said, yeah, so like I said, know your learning style. Like I said, it can be, you can be a combination um, of styles. I'm visual and kinesthetic but you can also be auditory you can also you know i don't i don't really know nobody like this but it, people like this exist um some people can just get by just reading and writing that is a learning style because some people can just get through and just read a book and they have like photographic memory and it's okay with words and it doesn't get like jumbled up in their minds like it does with me <laughs> and that just works for them. But the best way to know what your learning style is, is really practice and just kind of going through it. Do you learn better with colors and images? That's your visual. If you learn better with um, like actually acting out, using your hands, you know, doing something interactive, that's kinesthetic. Um, a good example of kinesthetic that I will always do is I will like incorporate whatever it is that I'm learning into a popular song. Doesn't matter what it is, 
what song it is <laughs> and what topic it is. But I would just kind of fit the words and kind of make like a little mini song um, to really help me. Mind you, I wouldn't sit here and spend however long making it like a three minute long song. But I would take a section of a song that's maybe like the hook or something like that and just like remix it to whatever it is that I'm really struggle with learning. So that's an example of doing something kinesthetic. Um, audio. Um, audio. If you like YouTube videos, if you like podcasts, you know, some people have to hear what it is um, in order for it to kind of register. And that's OK. Some people. This is another example of um, combination. Some people like to hear it watch it and then write it out that's a combination of like auditory visual and kinesthetic okay um and that's fine if you have a combination at least you know what works for you uh let's see uh, tori says i'm more of a writer type good that's fine and actually writing um stuff down actually reinforces whatever it is that you're um, learning so lots of time when I'm making my study kits before when I was in nursing school I didn't have nurse stamp study kits like you guys do I didn't have anything that would really help a visual learner so I had to literally create whatever it is that I need to create in whatever visual fashion I, I loved comparing um, pharmacology to like Disney <laughs> I don't know why that was my jam, but that definitely helped me get an A in pharmacology and dosage calculations. And, but I would always relate whatever it is, whether it's medication, uh, uh, lab values, whatever, whatever it is. I would always relate that to something Disney-wise, whether it's um, a Disney song <laughs> or just a Disney movie, a line from a Disney movie. Um, that's what I would use because A, I love Disney movies. And I did not <laughs> love pharmacology, so I wanted to marry the two so that it could, um, I can help, it can help me retain it and recall it. Tori says, I love your social media template. Thank you so much. And as far as those social media templates, I actually created the um, Facebook one. Yeah, the Facebook one that um, is used for like physiology, anatomy, not anatomy and physiology, but like pathophysiology, I created that because we had to do a um, project in nursing school and it was, and I'll never forget it, it was about, well, my actual content, my category was like lung cancer and you had to create, you know, something to um, present it to the class. And, you know, everyone was doing like PowerPoints and everything like that or just like, they had like a three, those, you know, those three trifold, that cardboard little thing that you used to have for like science science fairs and stuff in elementary school. <laughs> People would have those and it just, it wasn't working for me. So I want to do something a little different. So that's how I came up with the, um, the Facebook style um, profile of whatever it is that I was teaching. I was doing lung cancer. So I was like, I feel like People would definitely, and mind you, this was like in 20, like 12 or something, like 2013, something like that. I was like, you know, I feel like people would retain it more and it'll be actually interesting if I pretended or made this lung cancer um, presentation in the form of like a Facebook profile. You know, with your Facebook profile, it gives you the overview of whatever the profiler is, of whoever the profiler is. So I want to take that same aspect and apply it to um, nursing school and whatever I was learning. So I took that and it was like a hit. I'll, I'll upload the picture. It's on my Instagram somewhere, but I'll like, it's like in the archives. I'll upload a picture of the lung cancer one straight from the authentic one from nursing school. I'll upload that so you can kind of see what I did. Um, and I printed it out and I gave it to everybody in the class and they followed along. Um, and I got scored based off of how much they retained and how um, creative it was. So y'all know she aced it, period. Boop. All right, so like I said, number one thing is to know your learning style. That way, whatever it is that you're trying to consume, whatever content you're trying to consume, um, you can easily um, digest it. You can stick a little bit more. And sometimes it'll take trial and error. Sometimes it'll um, take a couple times or a couple different methods to really figure out what it is that you um, prefer to do or what really works for you. Like I said, nothing is one size fits all. What works for me won't work for you. 
It won't work for future. It won't work for Jada Wada. It's it's not gonna work for everybody. Okay, so figure out what works for you, and and that's not going to be a um what's the word I'm looking for. It's not going to be just like practice makes perfect. Um, it's not gonna be pretty all the time. Oh, thank you, me versus me. I love the nurse bundle. It's not going to be perfect all the time, but that's why you practice and you get up to whatever works for you. You figure out what works for you. All right. So once you know your learning style, then you can figure out how to, um, or what I should say, what to supplement your your study plan with. Okay. So for example, my study plan for my NCLEX, I did mine in six weeks, all right? So I had a six week study plan. Um, the way that I created my study plan, because I get easily overwhelmed if I'm stuck on one thing and I don't take a break, I had to literally write those breaks into it. And I suggest that you do as well, but I had to literally incorporate every break um, into those six weeks. Like I had to literally plan out those six weeks to almost, I won't say to the second, but like to the hour. <laughs> Yours, mine, ours, okay? Um, I did mine in six weeks. What I wanted to do was take those weekends off. I did, I wanted to study Monday through Friday and then maybe sometimes on Saturdays, but at the time um, I was working as well. So on the Saturdays and Sundays, I would be working as a waitress at um, like a seafood restaurant <laughs> at the time. So those couldn't really be my sit down and really get to it days where I sat down for however many hours a day and studied whatever topic. Those were going to be my off days. I worked, but at the same time while I was working, um, and like I said, you can do whatever works for you because I was working as a waitress, you know, you had those... Um, aprons you had those aprons and it would like contain like your um like the little you know the little black book that the servers kind of give you with your receipt in it and you sign it um i would have my weight my uh apron with that in one pocket and then flash cards in another pocket like i would have like see this like man, <laughs> it's like this much i probably have two of these um and i would take that with me to work inside my apron and in between my tables, I would just go through it. I would just kind of go through it and that would just kind of help me for whatever it was during that week that I studied and really focused on, on the weekend, that would kind of be like my um, my review, my free day, my self-care days, um, but it will also be my review days as well, where I just didn't really sit down and kind of study, but I just kind of just went over the content very like loosely um no pressure just go through some flashcards. um now they have digital flashcards. you can just pull out your phone <laughs> and go to quizlet and um do it that way but like i said i was working at the time so i couldn't really have my phone out even though i did i couldn't really have my phone out it was better when i just had um actual physical flashcards but once again writing on those flashcards as opposed to typing but writing on those flashcards really helped to um get me to re retain whatever it was that I was studying for that week so that was a very vital part of my study plan visual kinesthetic but that kinesthetic part was me actively and interactively writing out whatever it was okay um next thing like I said mine was six weeks from my graduation um, I suggest that you take four to six weeks, but some people do it like four to 12 weeks. That's usually at the average, but really the average average is about four to six weeks, depending on your personal story and you know how long it's been since you graduated. Um, I can't even see what your question is, love. Let me see. Um, let me see what this person is saying. Mm -mm. So I don't even have a question for you. You're doing all that and I don't even have a question for you. I hope you feel shame. <laughs> doing all that and I don't got a question from you. This person says, how do you limit how much info goes on the study guide? That's actually a personal preference. Like I, just like you would um, write like PowerPoints, you're not supposed to copy what's exactly in the book. 
for your PowerPoint or your outline, write down the important things that you um, that you need to remember based off of your strengths and weaknesses. Um, keep going, keep going. I, mean, I love the nurse bundles, the bomb. Thank you so much. Yeah, sincerely, Kev, all it says is expired star. So what you trying to say? <laughs> I need to get it out. <laughs> um, boop, boop, boop. What link expired? Okay, so you're going to have to, um, whatever you're talking about, you're going to have to either email support, because I'm not sure what you're talking about. We're talking about how to create a study plan. If you have any order information or questions regarding orders, if you have a link that's expired, I don't know. I don't know what link you're talking about. But go ahead and email support at the nurse.com or actually get your question out. Okay. Um, second of all, now take enough time to formulate your study plan. Like I said, average is about four to six weeks after graduation. But depending on you, your life, what you have, um, what you have to deal with in your actual personal life, professional life. Um, take all that into account when you're actually making a realistic time ta um, timetable as far as your, your study strategy. Don't just be like, oh, I want to be one of those people that um, studies for the NCLEX and takes it in a month. But you don't really have the either the knowledge, the, the strategy, or the confidence to do it in a month. Don't, don't set yourself up for that because you have to wait a certain amount of time. After. If you fail, you have to pay 200 bucks. It's, it's a whole song and dance. So I, I don't want any, I don't want to push anybody to, you know, taking something, taking any type of test, but especially not the NCLEX before you're actually ready. So that's why we want to go over how to create a study plan for you personally. All right. Um, a lot of people will ask me, you know, how long should I study per day? Typically about three to four hours, but how you break that up is once again, dependent on you and your strengths and your weaknesses and the topic. All right. So Here's an example of a study plan, just a just a um a regular study plan. Saturday through Sunday, or uh, let me say, I say Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are your um kind of like off days. But Monday through Friday, let's say Monday. Um, an example, what I would recommend as far as study study strategy and study plan is um every day you take at least um. I would say at least 60, 60 practice questions. Now, I don't want you to get overwhelmed, but what that's doing is A, you're getting, um, you're digesting a lot of content. Remember, studying for the NCLEX, um, mm, 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 mm. gotcha, studying for the NCLEX is, um, I just lost what I was saying. Wait for it. Yeah, studying for the NCLEX is not a race, okay? And so what you want to do is break whatever topic into um, into parts. You want to break up the topics, okay? So, for example, pharmacology. Uh, you wouldn't just take one day. You know how big pharmacology is? <laughs> you wouldn't just take one day and be like, okay, on Monday will be pharmacology, Tuesday fundamentals, th Thursday, Wednesday med surge. No, that's not what you're going to do because you're going to, A, not hit everything that you're supposed to hit. And you're going to actually, that's more of a, that's not a targeted review at all. So you're not really going to get the benefit of creating an actual study plan. So what I would suggest is actually doing questions, um, at least 60, because remember for the NCLEX, both PN and RN, you have to take a minimum of 75 all the way up to 265. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is really train yourself into not being burnt out and exhausted when you sit in there. Um, and taking 75 questions. So if you sit there and practice for at least four to six weeks or however long it's going to take you, no judgment, with 60 questions a day, you know, and you can slowly and surely work your way up, you know, from 60 one week to 65 to 70 to 75, you can do that. But you need to get in the habit of really trying to exercise and um, practice sitting still and taking an assessment for seven, at least 75 questions, okay? So in the, what I would say is that like whether it's like morning time, I recommend morning time because um, for that day, let's say Monday, let's say it's a Monday. All right. I would take 60 plus. I would, let's just go with 60. I would take 60 questions on Monday um, and that would just be a comprehensive 
um, like a mock NCLEX exam, a practice assessment, or you can do it based off of an assessment for a specific chapter. But I would take that, A, so you can see what your um, strengths and weaknesses are, um, and then B, for the afternoon for that same day, Monday night, Monday afternoon, that's when you take whatever, you evaluate whatever you, um, whatever your score was and how well you did versus how well you did not do on certain topics. You take that and then you use that to um, supply and supplement yourself with whatever um, resource you need to in your learning style regarding that topic so for example if monday was if week one let's say week one was pharmacology okay and monday was respiratory meds um tuesday was gi meds like that's how you would break it down you would have this big old topic but see if you dice it up and split it into parts it doesn't seem as overwhelming so you have one um, day that's focused to, yes, this pharmacology, but a specific category in, in pharmacology, okay? So you would take that whole week for pharmacology, or just an example, take that whole week for pharmacology, but Monday is uh, respiratory meds, Tuesday, GI meds, Wednesday, cardiac meds, um, so on, so forth, but whatever other types of uh, meds you wanna focus on. And each day you would take 60 questions, um, practice questions for that topic. So Monday, you would take 60 questions for, what I say, GI? GI meds or something like that? Or is that respiratory? One of those. Um, you would take 60 practice questions for GI. And then in the afternoon, let's say um, you scored, let's say on that actual um, practice exam, you scored like a 60-something, 50-something. Um, it's like a rule of thumb that you should all, you should at least score 70% or higher when you are um, doing your mock exam. Now, even though the NCLEX is, is not gonna give you a percentage, it's not gonna say, hey, you got an A, hey, you got a B, you got a 80%, uh, it's not gonna give you that, but it's just a good rule of thumb that as far as um, comprehension, remember, you have a minimum of 75 questions and a total of 265. It can shut off at any time in between then when, um, when the actual, um, with the algorithm behind the test kind of determines that you're either competent or not competent on the NCLEX in whatever category. So what you want to do is at least score at 70% or higher because that's going to really um, reinforce your chances and increase your chances of actually passing the real NCLEX. Like I said, you won't get a 70 on the NCLEX. That's not the type of score that you're going after. You're just kind of going after, okay, at 70%, that means I'm at least competent in whatever this is. So I can move on to my other category, okay? So 7% is just a good, comfortable um, percentage as far as the practice test slash mock exams, okay? Hold on, let me go back and see. Just in case. Danny Monroe, I don't care I love you. I love you too, Danny. Stop. Okay, don't stop. Mm -mm -mm. Nice. I'm in turn one. I've been struggling with A&P. Do you have any tips on how to study on that? Um, pretty much kind of the same thing as what I'm saying. Like this study plan can be used for ATITs. It can be used for A&P. Um, it can be used for the NCLEX. So specifically for A&P, um, same thing uh, for week one. Let's say you have, like you're studying, I don't know, the endocrine system. Monday, you would have, you would study and focus on, I don't know, pituitary gland. Tuesday, hormones, uh, stuff like that. <laughs> um, but you would take an entire, with AMP, you have like actual like organ systems and, and, and chapters or whatever. But I would take the chapter and spend that whole week on the chapter, depending on how big it is, and then cut it into small, um, smaller sub chapters or subtopics. Um, go through the actual book and kind of... Do I have an anatomy book? Oh, I do. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, one sec. All right. So, for example, I just turned to chapter 8, which is joints. Okay. You can either... I'm going to end with this joints. Um, anatomy is, is a little bit more um, or less inclusive as far as or less comprehensive as far as like the NCLEX. The NCLEX, you just have the entire uh, 
your entire nursing program to kind of remember. For anatomy and physiology, you have like that semester or whatever it is. Um, it's not as, you don't have a long, um, it's not a long, uh, like a period of time that you have to take and study. So you can actually um, take a chapter per day, if that makes sense. So uh, just with, with, like I said, with this, I, chat, I turned to like the joints chapter and that's chapter eight in my book. Um, Monday, I would still take, I will go, whether it's like the, um, the online content that's usually, uh, depending on the book that you have, if anybody has Saunders, whether that's NCLEX, or um, I don't remember if A and P does um, Saunders, but for NCLEX, if you have Saunders, or if you have A and P and you're doing what was this like Pearson or something like that, they usually have like online content, interactive content, and they'll have like even more questions than what's included in the book, and um, that's where you can go so um, and really reinforce whatever it is that it's teaching so that's still an example of what how you can study and use the study plan to study for um, anatomy and physiology okay i would take my practice tests or my questions in the morning time and then depending on what i didn't score so hot on i'm going to in the afternoon either review youtube videos if i'm an auditory learner um um listen to podcasts for that specific thing you know i'm gonna actually go back and reinforce my weaknesses if that makes sense so if i know that i didn't um score so hot or do so hot on um i don't know beta blockers or something like that then i'm gonna go back i'm either going to based on my my learning style I'm going to go back and I'm either going to, you know, watch YouTube videos to kind of get more of a um, understanding of them in a different way other than just my book. Okay, that's, that's what I really want you guys to take away from it. When you take your practice tests and you see what you didn't get, you know, do so well in, don't just go to your book and reread the chapter. Don't do that. It's really not going to stick. Um, you can go back to your book and kind of read that specific part of the chapter, but to really drive it into your brain and to help reinforce it um, so you can both retain it and recall it, do something that's according to your learning style. Watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, um, get one of my, you know, study kits, one of those, um, and really, you know, re retest yourself so as test yourself and reinforce that information based off of your specific learning style okay um specifically for the NCLEX that's the exact reason why I came up with NCLEX Arcade I'm a visual learner U World was not working for me no shade to U World if it works for you girl awesome amazing use it and abuse it <laughs> use it to your heart's content if it works for you if anything works for you you specifically, then use it. It doesn't matter if it's popular. It doesn't matter if it's not popular. If something works for you, like resource-wise, then use it, okay? Um, but for me specifically, you world just did not work for me. Hold on. I'm going back to me. Going back. Going back. Going back. How many years have you been a nurse? Eight. I'm a huge procrastinator. Me too. <laughs> um, Joanne said, at my nursing school, we have 11 chapters to learn before our exam. So you, what you can do, the person that said they have 11 chapters to learn for, before our exam, how long do you have until your exam? If you have 11 days plus more, then you can use that and maybe dedicate a day to one chapter so you don't overwhelm yourself. Does that make sense? Um... The only thing is, in my school, we literally do one chapter per day, so it seems very overwhelming, and that's with both fundamentals as well as A and P. And that's, are you in the L, uh, the LPN program, <laughs> Naya? Because that's part of the reason why the LPN program is, I didn't say it, people, other people have said this to me. Now, I have not gone through an RN bridge, but many, many, many people that have, I'll say when I went through my RM bridge, like my LPM program was harder, not because of content, but because of the time frame that you had in between your tests and exams. And you had to just still learn and absorb all this information 
in such a short amount of time before moving on to the next thing. And you had to score, I don't know about y'all, but I think we had to score like a C plus or something, a 75. We had to score a, a score at 75 um, or higher on every exam. And if you scored below it um, like two times, you're out of the program. <laughs> so that pressure in itself, anxiety, all right? Um, so what I would do is really like to really help with overwhelm when you have, um, when you get your syllabus, honestly, before you even start the semester, before you even start any of that, um, really try to plan out um, and see the length of time between tests. This is for like if you're actually in nursing school. Um, see the length of time that you have before um, between tests so that you can plan out your studying in between that. Like for me, when I knew we had a test next Tuesday or something like that on a chapter, I would count how many pages are in the chapter. Like this chapter is 80 pages and I have eight days to um, study it. I would chop it up. I would do 10 pages per day or something like that. And really, so it's not as overwhelming. Cause like I said, with me, if I'm overwhelmed, I'm just not gonna do it. <laughs> it's, not gonna, it's not gonna work for me. But I know this about myself. It's not to you know say that I can't do it or say that I'm any less than or anything like that. It's just that I know what works for me and I know what happens if I do something that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I know what the result's gonna be, so we're just gonna avoid that and we're just gonna go based off of what actually works, okay? Um, mm -mm -mm. So even if you have to like read and go through one chapter per day in class, when you get home, go back through it, do something that's a little bit more, you know, interactive, a little bit more fun, depending on how you study and what your learning style is to really try and um, drive it into um, your brain and really make you feel like you actually confidently know the information instead of just, we have one day to go over this one chapter. So the teacher, the professor is going to skim through it. No, <laughs> that's, that's, it's common, but you know, that's when practice definitely makes perfect. Um, but that's when you kind of pick up on those cues and kind of create whatever works for you. Let me look and see what you says. Uh -uh. Um, Mo Love, so I've been listening to Mark, uh, I don't know his name, but Mark K lecture reviews for NCLEX. If anyone is an auditory learner, that is a, a, a bunch of people do that. Um, a lot of other people listen to like, um, I forgot her name, but registered nursing, like on YouTube, I know specifically me, I used her when I was in nursing school and that was years ago, <laughs> years ago. Um, but that's just because I wanted to get something that was just more than just reading the book. Okay. So uh, Mark K for anyone that's auditory, um, uh, I forgot her name, but little lady registered nursing, <laughs> registered nursing like RN, I think on YouTube. She has great stuff. People love like simple nursing. He has um, YouTube videos as well. Um, practice questions on Evolve. I'm Leah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think Evolve is. That is for like a cell server. Elsevier, Elsevier. What was I saying? Excelsior. What was I about to say? But Elsevier slash like the, those Saunders books. Hold on, I have one right here. I got this is my office, so I have all my books. One second. So like this is the the RN one. I have the PN one as well. But like I'm a cupboard just in case y'all try to get me. But like in here where it says. Um, it says you've purchased more than just a textbook. Um, activate the complete learning experience and register with your strapped scratch off access code so you can um, utilize the online study tools and exercises that can help deepen your understanding of textbook content. Listen, I learned that in high school. That that was a that was a tip and strategy that I learned in high school. I just couldn't do the books. I needed like like I said, I'm interactive. I'm visual. I'm a visual learner. So what I like, especially for AMP, what really really helped me ace AMP one and two and lab was like um, the memory games, like on um, 
I think I had Pearson books, obviously. But on the online little study tool section, you would have, um, you know, you can create your own quiz based off the chapter. Not like create your own, but you can like go in. Even though you had like the chapter summary and the, the little mini quiz at the end of the chapter, online they had even more questions to help once again further and deepen your understanding of the content and topic and if you just want to do more than just like quiz your okay sorry one second is lauren here because she's gonna get me <laughs> for not hooking my phone up again but yeah um but yeah, besides taking like the practice quizzes with even more questions on the online study tools, you can do like interactive fun games. And one of the games that I absolutely love, they also have this on Quizlet too, was like the memory game, the matching game. So for terminology, especially terminology, like medical terminology, or just, um, um, it would be for other things too, but let's just say for um, terminology, for example, um, you would have, you know, one tile for the word and the term, the other tile for the actual um, definition. And just like a game of like memory, like, you know, those memory card, memory matching games where you got to like pick up one card or, or turn over one card and you and you see what it is and then pick up another card somewhere else and you get the definition. You got to try to remember memory wise <laughs> where that corresponding card is. And um, that just, A, interactively, it was interactive and kinesthetic, so it definitely worked for me. It was fun, and it just, it helped me to really retain and remember whatever it was, whatever topic, whatever terminology that I needed to use, because it wasn't just me reading a word slash definition. Like, it just, it was easier for me, even though it, it took more. Does that make sense? Like it wasn't just me reading, but once again, my learning style, I don't learn the best when I just read. Like I have to do something fun <laughs> and it has to be something visual. So me knowing that, those memory games were bomb. Um, um, they also had like other things where I had to, uh, like other games where I could, um, like hangman, crossword puzzles, those things like that to really make it fun and interactive for me and that helped me. So make sure um, whatever book that you have, if you're studying for NCLEX, I highly recommend Saunders books, whether it's PN or RN, I highly recommend Saunders, um, especially if you're like, well, if you're a visual learner, they have this one, the illustrated study guide for um, exams. Mind you, this is not sponsored by Saunders, but like I said, I'm just wanna, I just wanna make sure Y'all have everything y'all need and, you know, you get the tea <laughs> and not just promoted tea, if that makes sense. I really want, if it helps you out, I'm going to tell you about it, whether or not they're cutting me a check or not, okay? Um, but Saunders really, really helped me because I'm a visual learner. I needed a little bit more than just, um, um, my, you know, the textbook. So the illustrated version really helped me this one's also like Elsevier do they have yeah and they have and they usually tell you like right here evolve access code yeah access code and sign for the online stuff same thing with like my Saunders Does it say right here yep same thing with Saunders access code inside so I knew that once I got those books and I would just I would pop those books open and pop my laptop laptop open log, log into evolve or whatever it was and just really go to work. That just helped me. So um, Evolve, I love that because it's kind of everything in one hub, everything in like in one um, place. You can go and you can take your practice questions, your mock exams, and you can also like, um, like niche it down and like um, specifically create a quiz or test or assessment based off of what you're actually weak in or what you actually wanna be tested in. So, for example, um, I know in the beginning, I want to say in the beginning, <laughs> but y'all know, if y'all don't know me by now, respiratory and GI, I hate. I cannot, I cannot stand it. It is super, super boring for me. It's, it really takes, 
<laughs> it really takes an act of like God for me, for me to retain anything because it's super boring for me. Not saying it's a boring chapter, but for me, it just does not. Respiratory and GI, whether it was anatomy and physiology, um, nursing school, I just never really, I can't say I never really did well, but the motivation and discipline to study with those specific chapters were definitely not there. Okay, so I definitely had to learn how to um, make it fun, if that makes sense. And those specific um, tools would really, really help. The content's not going to change. It's, it's going to forever be boring to me. Forever. But the way that I consume it is going to really make a difference as far as whether it sticks or not. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Can you get Mark whatever his last name is on Amazon, I'm not sure. Google it. Google that thing. Because I don't think you, actually, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak. Because I don't know if you, if you buy his stuff or you just like view his stuff on YouTube. I'm not sure. Um, he's on YouTube. Yeah, right. So he's on YouTube. He has to be an NCLEX test writer. So he gives good um, strategies. Yep, exactly. Um, Oh, Kichandra, you went to Chat Tech? I went to Chat Tech too. And I had AMP at Chat Tech too. Um, hold on one second. Let me look at what y'all say. Mark, can help me with the farm questions on the NCLEX? See, there's certain people that, that can help you with certain um, topics. And you can definitely just utilize that. Mark K helped you with farm questions, registered R and nursing, whatever her name is. She helped me with like all my, my maternity stuff. Um, she had a video for like maternity, so it, it's, it worked for me. Um, mm -mm, did you work in study groups? Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing that you can do with your study plan is incorporate the use of study groups. If you don't like working alone, you don't like studying alone because either you need some accountability or you're just like ADHD like me and you will quickly go and do something else. Like, <laughs> I can't tell y'all how many times I knew I was supposed to study for this GI exam and I ended up playing Sims for three hours. Like, <laughs> it just did not work for me. So I literally had to go and be like, okay, y'all, let's go and have, I will call my group, my um, study groups like um, study parties. That's what we used to call them, study parties. And we would go over in somebody's house. Usually it was mine. We would go over because I had like, um, whatever it was, I had like the the anatomy like models. Does that make sense? I used to have like a, a good number of like, like the anatomy of the heart, like those little um, models. I used to have those um, in my possession because I was real cool with the A&P lab um, um, professor. So he used to let me take them home. Yep. And <laughs> so we would use that for um, our study groups. So we would order pizza. We would put like Grey's Anatomy in the background, but like turn the volume real, real down and just make it just really is. It seems like it just seemed like we were um, we were obviously we were studying, but we did it in a way that wasn't overwhelming. It was actually fun. And um, we really got stuff down like. If I didn't have those study groups, I, don't, I honestly don't know what I would have did. Just because of me and my ADHD, ADHD brain, it would have worked. <laughs> it would not have worked. So I needed that accountability and I also needed that extra um, like stimulation to make sure that I like either stayed awake <laughs> or you know really um, was grasping something the correct way instead of the incorrect way. Because like I said, not everybody learns the same. So what you can take advantage of um, is, you know, the other people in your study groups, maybe someone has a grasp on the content, you know, the um, category content or whatever that you don't have. And so sh he or she can teach you and vice versa. Maybe I have a grasp on hypertensive meds and, and your study group partner does not. So you can kind of do one-on-one -on -one like that. Not one-on-one, -on -one, just you, you and her, but just like, okay, I have it best. This is how I learned and kind of like teach the group. Another very important way and a very clutch way of um, really getting the information to stick in your, in your brain and stick in your head is to teach somebody else. Okay. I think the, the phrase is like, I forgot each one, teach one or something like that. 
reach one each i forgot but like yeah i think it was actually called each one teach one hold on what does that actually mean yeah when someone learned how to do something it became their responsibility to teach somebody else so like each one teach one um so if i knew i had a um, advantage on a certain topic then i would teach somebody else and teaching somebody else is actually one of the um one of the main ways that you can really know that you have a grasp and a comprehension of whatever topic if you could teach somebody something that means and they get it correctly that means you have um, now i won't say mastered that content but you um definitely have a comprehension um in that topic or that category if that makes sense let me look and see what y'all saying you world is 10 times harder than the anglex and it's boring sorry sorry you world but y'all are for me um artistry said we have to average a 78 on all exams to pass that sucks um jane dill i'm taking med search and mental health little little tip for mental health Mind you, practice, you need to practice everything, but mental health, especially if you don't come from a mental health background, which, I mean, if we're going through nursing school, not a lot of us was like, oh, I came from, you can't really major in mental health, but that's psycho psychology, but learning how to therapeutically communicate with the patient is a skill that really comes with practice. And as a nursing student, you're obviously not going to have that practice one-on-one -on -one with another patient besides like clinicals. Um, so your other practice has to come from practice questions. For mental health, one of the best things that I could have done was just went through and um, just, I just, I went and I just took a whole bunch of practice questions because eventually, and I say this all the time when we do like NCLEX Jeopardy and T's. Tease Tuesday, you can only ask a question so many times. You can only, um, yeah, yeah, you can only ask a question so many times, especially about a certain topic, okay? Um, eventually, you start to, once you take enough of them, and that's why we kind of usually recommend like taking like 60 questions a day or d for five, six weeks or however much, because eventually you'll start to see a pattern not in how they're asking you because those NCLEX style questions, you're, you're not going to see that exact same um, question, but it's going to be very, very similar. Like wording may be different, but the actual, what they're asking you is going to be very similar slash the same. Um, yeah, so especially with mental health and therapeutic communication, practice, practice, practice questions. Take all the practice questions that you can. In the beginning, it can be very frustrating because you're just like, oh my gosh, I keep getting it wrong. Like, I keep thinking that it's going to, you know, be this answer, but it's not. But just, it just keep at it. Keep doing those practice questions and eventually you'll start to be, you'll start to kind of correct yourself. Like, okay, last time I took this question, I saw, I thought it was this because it had this keyword. I thought it was just because it said this, but when I um, went over it, it wasn't this, it was this <laughs> because of whatever else and so eventually you'll start to like self-correct and correct yourself and um that really only comes from practice um Mabe 1103 another thing with uh <laughs> Mabe said so about 17 chapters um another thing is it takes me forever to read a chapter if it takes you forever to read a chapter then it, most likely reading isn't your learning style mind you you would have to go through the chapter and read it anyway. But what I would do, if I just wouldn't sit there and just read it in one sitting. Like I would read it and take notes, if that makes sense. Um, so I would read it, go through it, but also take notes. And the way I took notes is by drawing. So even though I wasn't necessarily like a writer type of um, learning style, I was more so like visual, like I said. I would visually draw something. If y'all have been with me on NCLEX Jeopardy at Tease Tuesday and I'm like working out a problem, I'll draw something in a heartbeat. I'm not saying it's Picasso, but <laughs> it just helped me learn because just reading just was not working for me. Um, um, we have to read about a minute, uh, minimum three chapters per lecture. We have two lectures on two different topics a week. Do, 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 do. We have an exam every Monday for the questions, and then one quiz every Wednesday or Friday. It alternates. 
this this and that oh somebody said level up rn she's also good as well right we said simple nursing hold on i feel like i'm real 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 far up and i was i get so bored doing the books i don't know i need something <laughs> look through the um online content of those books mm -mm -hmm -hmm. let me see what else Um, I don't get that question, Lori, DM me. Um, yeah, do one, teach one. Thank you. <laughs> Nakiria said we tried like a study group and when people don't get it, they get upset and angry and don't want to participate. Just like you have to learn who your friends are, you got to learn who your study group partners are. <laughs> Your first study group partner or partners may not be who you actually like mesh well as far as studying. Maybe they get an attitude and go on their phone and, and scroll through TikTok for half the time or something like that. That's not who you want to surround yourself with. Thank you. Thank you, girl. Love you so much. But I got to focus. So kick you in the study group. Love you. Love you a long time. But I got to kick you out. <laughs> You got to do what you got to do for you. You know, just like not every friend is your travel friend. Not every friend or classmate is your study friend. Okay. Um, boop, 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 boop. Um, if you feel like it's hard kind of getting into study groups, like definitely come to our NCLEX Jeopardies or um, our Tease Tuesday, depending on what stage you're in, because we do like a group virtual study group. And it's super fun. Uh, Gigi Isaac, she knows. She be there. First of all, Chris Jenner would never. <laughs> That's just a funny name. <laughs> um, your study group cut you off? Oh my gosh, that is pet tea. Well, at least they did the cut. At least you didn't have to go and be like, Yo, look, y'all dragging me down. <laughs> Think of it as dead weight, cutting off that dead weight. No offense, but offense. If you kept being the one that's passing and you were surrounding yourself by other people that just wasn't getting it, that's how you know you need to move to the other side of the room. Okay. Um, let me look in and see what else y'all are saying. <laughs> um, Nick said people used to try to study and drink wine, and I'm like, no, ma'am. Um, we would. We would do that like afterwards, but we honestly, we wouldn't like drink, drink. We would have like, okay, y'all do not judge me, but me and my study group, we were so lame. But what we would do is we would take like um, shot glasses um, and fill it with like Sprite or like water or something like that and pretend it's tequila. Don't judge me. Oh, I just feel y'all judging me. Oh, I just feel y'all judging me. But it was fun and it was like, okay, if you get this question right, take this shot of full tequila. And you'd be like, mm -mm 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 -mm. and then sometimes we'll have like a lemon or something like that. <laughs> and after we take the shot of Sprite or water or whatever it was, we'd be like, just to make it very dramatic. Don't, don't judge me. Let's, let's not, let's keep going. <laughs> but once again, it made it fun. It really, really made it fun. We obviously couldn't have like a drinking game because everybody would get lit and pass out and no studying would be done. But we would try to incorporate like that, like that college, like frat, <laughs> like have like beer pong, but it's not really beer, it's root beer or something like that. It'll just make it really, really fun, especially if you correlate it with something that you're studying. Y'all know me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy, <laughs> but it made it fun. And the more fun I have when I'm studying, the more I'm going to retain, right? And, and sometimes I'd be like, oh my gosh, I remember learning that. That was right before I took my third Sprite fake shot. And it was this, that. That's just how my brain works. So if y'all want to give that a try, go ahead. Just don't judge me. <laughs> um, so that's what we totally would do. Do you do HESI A2 quizzes? Um, I don't do HESI um um quizzes but if you are studying for since we're giving like resources and stuff if you're studying for the ATITs or HESI A2 I definitely recommend Nurse Hub nursehub.com they have they're like a premium um prep they also have free practice tests if you kind of want to just oh shit if you want to go through and kind of give it a try um but after that um 
uh, I think it's like $19.99 a month and you get access to over like 7,500 questions as far as ATITs and HESI A2 um, and the Wonderlick if some of y'all are using, needing to use the Wonderlick as well. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So let me see what else. Hold on. Let me move my anatomy book. Let me make sure I went over the yeah we went over it so as far as how long you should typically study this is like a summary how long you should typically study um depend like i said it depends on what you're studying for but for nplex i would say give yourself on average like four to six weeks but you can go all the way up to like 12 weeks i had somebody the other day that passed their nclex after being out of school 10 years okay congrats to her um study hours a day about three to four um that's not including um the practice test that you do just the three to four hours should be you consuming the content based on your learning style so if it needs to be three to four hours of you um listening to mark k simple nursing playing my nclix arcade um then that's what you can do as well this breakdown and study plan is very similar to what we did for nclix arcade it was um six days and for three hours for six days, we went over comprehensive NCLEX stuff, all right? So one day, we went over um, pharmacology meds. Pharmacology meds, respiratory meds, um, like maternity meds, we just went over meds. Next day, we went over like actual, um, we, it was actually topic wise. We went over like maybe med surge, nutrition, and each day we just focused on um, like one or two topics and just spent those three hours expanding upon that. So that's just an example of how you should break down whatever it is you're studying so you don't get overwhelmed and just say, I need to review the past one to four years in how, four weeks or something like that. Okay. All right. And then, like I said, know your strengths and weaknesses. And you know that by taking practice exams. Okay slash mock NCLEXs. Let me look. Um, and then last but not least, of course, know your learning style. Mm-mm-mm, we have to do a HESI for the exit. Oh, I didn't have to do HESI. I did, like, we did an ATI ex um, exit exam, but it was, it wasn't the T's and it wasn't the HESI. It was, ATI was the maker of the exam, but the exit is like your um, predictor test. <clears throat> Um, and, um, if y'all never use ATI, if you're saying for, if you're specifically studying for your ATI exit, um, or like one of your ATI actual like exams, I highly recommend using your ATI books, your ATI content, because there's something about ATI. It's like a language of its own. So don't confuse yourself the way that they ask questions. It, just just stick with ATI when you're studying for specific ATI stuff. Now, for like the regular NCLEX, then have at it. But if you can, stick with your ATI book um, as far as like the, the basics. You can supplement it with whatever you want. But definitely for ATI uh, exams, stick to your ATI book. I know I hate ATI. If ATI was a person, all the hands, okay? Um... Where can we go along for practice exams? Depending on whatever it is that you're practicing for, a quick Google search, um, Nurse Lab, Quizlet, Simply Nurse Then, um, Nurse Hub, depending on what it is that you're studying for. They usually at least have these free practice exams. And also, um, if you download the Nurse Sam app, it's completely free. I give you 25 um, free NCLEX questions every week. So what's today, Friday? So yesterday, another 25 set of 25 and they're, they're all comprehensive um and we usually do it's these are it's our NCLEX Jeopardy and um we do five categories and five questions per category so the category for yesterday was like pharmacology pediatrics mental health fundamentals and med surge those were the categories for um last week I think the week before that was like dosage calculations, mental health, and we just kind of like rinse, not rinse and repeat, but we rotate the categories to make sure that you're getting comprehensive um, NCLEX practice, but not overwhelming yourself. So you can get free 25 questions every week 
um, when you download the Nurse Sam app and you can just play and that one's like Jeopardy style. So even though it's 25 practice questions, um, it's in Jeopardy style, like the whole blue screen, you know, categories and you have like 100, 200, 300 points. That's just an example of how I would need to study me personally, which is why I implemented it. If I, if I took a practice question and I made it into a game show, it, it made all the difference. So every Thursday and Tuesday, we have that game show like practice for on Tuesday, we have it for ATITs. And for um, Thursdays, we have it for the NCLEX. Just we make we make it into a game show. We even play for prizes just because to make, we make it fun. I already told y'all, I'm, I'm all about fun learning, happy studying, because it, in the end, it's really going to help you um, retain and be able to recall it at whatever time that you need it. Okay? Mm -mm -mm. Now, if you guys kind of want a little bit more about... Um, and resources as far as like how to study, whether or not you're in nursing school, about to apply to nursing school, or if you've graduated and just need some more um, content for your NCLEX, make sure you guys check out the Study Bar community. It is studybarcommunity.com. You can, it's our monthly subscription um, for, or monthly membership, I'm sorry, for um, nursing students and um, new grads, as well as aspiring nursing students. And you kind of have, um, a little bit of everything for whatever stage of the nursing journey that you're in. Uh, we started it last month, so obviously it's growing. It's definitely growing. Um, we have about like 20 NCLEX um, videos in there, like NCLEX Jeopardy replays, uh, at least 20 um, ATIT's Jeopardy replays. Um, all the replays from this week, like the um, difference between ATIT's and six and seven, um, test taking strategies all those replays will be in the video vault of study broad community and then obviously as well if you guys are visual learners and you do not have any of my study kits um this whole week up until what's today friday so tomorrow is the last day you can get 30 percent off everything anything site-wide on the nursesam.com use code finals 30 um it's it's everywhere so if you don't remember it if you go to the website you'll see it both in the um in the top black bar and you'll also see like a a banner basically giving you the code as well so you code um finals 30 for 30 percent off whatever study kit you need i recommend the ultimate nursing school bundle because it contains pediatrics maternity mental health it can you know contains all that but just in a fun fun way like i said um i don't do anything that's just you know me copying the notes or whatever it's usually like um related to something fundamentals is related to rugrats iv therapy is related to iv park from beyonce <laughs> um what else mental health is related to like scooby-doo and it just makes it fun to actually learn the stuff okay so if you have not checked it out make sure you do that Ultimate Nursing School Bundle, 30% off if you use code FINALS30. Yasmin said, when will the gummies be back in stock? If if we to, if we decide to restock those, it'll be closer to September because the actual um, nootropic, the lion's mane, takes about 90 days to, um, um, well, that the, the lion's mushroom, the lion's mane mushroom. It takes about 90 days for us to go ahead and, um, you know, like package and everything like that. So if we do do that, it'll be closer to September. If we don't, I'll let y'all know. But y'all let me know if y'all want me to restock those gummies or not because I'm kind of on the fence. But if y'all definitely um, missed out and want to get more, let me know. So that is it for how to create a study guide, guys. This replay will once again be in the study bar community. Um, for those of you guys that were here earlier this week for the ATIT 6 versus ATIT 7, um, that document will be going out and I'll actually be putting that as a freebie as well. Just give me some time to do that. And don't forget to download the Nurse Damn app so you can play your free practice questions. All right. If y'all have any more questions, send me a DM of an actual question, not just craziness, because my DMs are flooded with crazy questions like, 
I can't even give y'all an example. I can't even give y'all an example. But if um, you have sent me a DM and I've missed it, just send me another DM so it can kind of refresh and send to the um, to the top because I'll be going through my DMs tonight. So if you need anything, y'all know where to find me. All right, so tomorrow we are going to do our last um, live for this week and it will be on the next generation NCLEX, the one that's coming next year in 2023. So make sure you guys come and join me tomorrow at 7 p.m. right here on Instagram Live. And we'll be going over um, next generation um, changes, the difference between the current version and the next generation version. If y'all are taking NCLEX in 2023, you need to be here. You need to be here. All right. So I'll see y'all tomorrow.